The Sirens Three, stanzas 121 through 140, by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org, by Jason in Panama. 121. Alone I stood in that still house of time, all swept and bare it was as at the prime, and but the sea wind peopled it with sighs, and heard afar the slow waves measured chime. 122. I saw time's shape colossal rising stark against the endless waves, receding dark beneath a rising dawn that never rose upon the sea, where yet would hope embark. 123. Yea, hope arose and drew the painted veil of things that are, and furled it like a sail, and on her gilded prow I stood at gaze on golden sands beyond the morning pale. 124. And from the face of earth were drawn away, like clinging mists that do obscure the day, the shadows and the fears which have oppressed her children long beneath their baneful sway. 125. As new created in her sculpted sphere, I saw her rise again translucent, clear, Robed in the kindling splendor of the sun, Renascent from the sea of crystal air. 126. That limpid broke on her rejoicing shore, Where life's reviving stream welled evermore from nature's fount, Through teeming veins that bred man's countless kin, from one redundant core. 127. I saw the dragon slain of lust and greed, of gold and power that waste to serve their need poor human lives, and till earth's fruitful fields with fire and sword and bloody vengeance breed. 128. No more the nations armed did lie and wait, like bandits fierce, to spoil and desolate which each did hold most dear. No dogs of war at tyrant's beck, let loose to maim and bait. 129. No peoples blind by blinder leaders led into the pit of shame, or daily fed like swine on empty husks and sophistries, and frozen custom giving stones for bread. 130. No selfish castes in internecine strife, Fought like the beasts to win a worthless life, No ruthless commerce cheapened hope and health, Or held to slavish throats starvation's knife. 131. No rights usurped against the common good Breathed out defiance, and the claims withstood Of labor and of life, where all by labor lived, no bonds were there but bonds of brotherhood. 132. No temple gloom obscured the lucent skies, nor incense fume of faith's dead sacrifice, no baneful toil made cities desolate with hellish smoke at morn and eve to rise. 133. No morbid anchorite with famished creed Would man persuade to sell his nature's need of joy. No fevered dream of future fate Would snatch life's brimming cup, his human need. 134. Not there blind dogma flung the bitter fruit of discord, Burning red or hate uproot the flower of innocence or fraud beguiled, or force laid iron hands on man and brute. 135. I saw regenerate man as stainless, free, a child again on Mother Nature's knee, his wistful eyes did scan the starry spheres, his hands outstretched to life's new-flowering tree. 136. The ages kneeling at his feet did bear the treasure of their thoughts in caskets rare. The fire tried gold of science and the lore of wisdom, bought with costly toil and care. 137. 
the thoughts each moment from the quivering brain that spring like flames or born with labor pain embodied there i saw quick thronging spirits fair from whose inwoven wings light fell like summer rain 138 and each in hand did bear the emblems bright wherein do art and poesy delight and mysteries of science hid in time her wands of power and globes of knowledge light 139 for more than men lives man through death alive slow moves the progress vast still cry and strive new hopes new thoughts for utterance and for act and use and strength and beauty yet survive 140 yea beauty's image graven on the mind beats with the pulse of life in life enshrined irradiant she moves in love's own flame and joy with her and the sweet graces kind end of stanzas 121 through 140 this recording is in the public domain The Sirens Three stanzas 141 through 144 by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. 141. Like Venus flashing from the lucent sea, or from the earth the flower Persephone, she that was buried, lo, is born again, and time her resurrection brings to be. 142 daughter of earth yet is not mortal she though time hath shook the blossoms from her tree her spring returns her summer and her fruit and art by her hath immortality 143 i saw i heard no more for sleep like rain fell soft at last upon my restless brain for sleep in all the pageant made the last and with her poppies swept mine eyes again. 144. Yea, far upon her wings than I was born all dreamlessly, till, like a dream, the morn broke on my sense and sight, and swift and loud, day, like a hunter, blew his golden horn. End of stanzas 141 through 144, and end of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Flora's Feast, A Mask of Flowers by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson The sullen winter nearly spent, Queen Flora to her garden went To call the flowers from their long sleep, The year's glad festivals to keep. And one by one, each making bold, Their silken vesture to unfold, and peeping forth to meet the sun the long procession is begun the snowdrops first upon the scene white crested brave king's frosts the main the little crocus reaches up to catch a sunbeam in his cup the daffodil his trumpet blows and after spring a hunting goes anemones rode out the gale frail windflowers fluttered red and pale the violet and the primrose dame with modest mien but hearts aflame green kirtled from the brooklet's fold the rustic maid marsh marigold the lady smocks all silver white the milkmaids of the meadows bright where shining buttercups abound among the cowslips on the ground here lords and ladies of the wood with shaking spear and riding hood black knight at arms the white plumed thorn in pomp the crown imperial born while tulips lift their banner red or fill their cups with fire instead sweet hyacinths their bells did ring to swell the music of the spring with blazoned pennons from each spear the iris and the flag appear sweet masking may in white or red her snowy cloud of blossom spread and chaucer's daisy small and sweet seduce et la margaret the little lilies of the vale white ladies delicate and pale great peonies in crimson pride and budding ones in green that hide fair columbines that drew the car 
a venus from her distant star and love's own flower the blushing rose the queen of all the garden close and roses from the hedge grow wild behind their thorns that faintly smiled and from the cressy brook's green side forget me not a small voice cried her stately lilies pale and proud in vesture pure as summer cloud or burning like an orange flame with torches borne aloft they came the monk that wears the hood of blue the bells of canterbury too wide ox eyes in the meads that gaze on scarlet poppy heads ablaze ere evening primrose lights her lamp a beacon to the garden camp when lilies of the day are done and sunk the golden westering sun fresh pink casts incense on the air in fluttering garments fringed and rare their cousin from the corn in blue corn marigold of golden hue the fond convolvula still clings the honeysuckle spreads his wings the hollyhock his standard high rears proudly to the autumn sky the blazing sunflower black and bold burns yet to win the sunset's gold that reddening on the triton spear foretells the waning of the year when lilies turn to tigers blaze amid the garden's tangled maze where still in triumph stiff and gold the rich chrysanthemums unfold ere doth the floral pageant close with one last flower a christmas rose end of poem this recording is in the public domain from hellas homeward section number 25 of renaissance a book of verse by walter crane this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America. From Hellas Homeward From sea to sea our steamer glides, the Adriatic laves her sides, her engine's deep pulsating beat, a throbbing heart of fire and heat, its freight of human hearts to bear with good and ill as time doth wear still changeful as the changing seas beneath the wayward winds increase or like the bird that eastward flies our thoughts fare backwards with our eyes which still the blue aegean holds round grecian isles its cincture folds where on sunium falls the light and carves anew the columns white where the gulf of Naplia fills the sculptured sides of argos hills and through their gates thrown back do show fair gardens rich and trees a row where yet in waking dreams one sees the apples of hesperides with but the gleaming scales between of water in the sunset's sheen past the twinkling lights that show like stars to mock celestial glow and light us back to antique ground to tyrants buried ruins found and agamemnon's house of old with treasures of mycenae's gold where stands the lion-guarded gate to keep the city's shattered state among the lonely hills forgot of ages long as it were not hill and dale dissolving glide as the winged wheels swiftly slide but nemean crags that still the legendary echoes fill or by corinth's fortress steep and shattered temple still at keep the record of her ancient fame her glory passed into a name what oracle from delphi here what message from apollo bear speaks no more the god of light doth he no word to men indite yea day by day his arrows flight behold dividing dark and bright till they strike athena's fanes still upon the rock she reigns though alas her house of state empty is and desolate fair still her shrine of marble shines when is the sun like moon defines with opal lights and shadows blue that well-nigh build the temple new which day by day o'erlays with gold as in the sun's bright flame of old many a morn and eve have we watched him rise and set at sea his foaming steeds with tossing crests turn fire the watery way they breast where dolphins leaping drive this spray before them in their wanton play what if the ancient gods no more are seen of men on sea or shore what if a sterner creed and cold did drive them from the temple's fold or pride of rule curse of gold with wasting care that makes youth old do blind men's eyes to all save gain 
and beauty pleased with them in vain though greed would all the earth degrade and see the world a market made and drive the peasant from his soil and lay the yoke of hopeless toil upon the million seeking bread to art and love and beauty dead not all has gone while these have hold in some true hearts not bought and sold though fallen aphrodite's shrines still through the opal wave she shines or veiled in light doth sail the blue or breaks the foam in iris hue and still from dangerous rocks is heard the siren's song odysseus feared far wandering from his secret home in ithaca across the foam the same stars shine above his head as watch us on our rocking bed as turned his thought to child and wife and homestead dear and pleasant life so tossing on the houseless seas sweet thoughts of home our hearts do please end of poem this recording is in the public domain Rondeau, beyond the verge by walter crane read for librivox dot org by iswa in belgium in february two thousand and seventeen beyond the verge of night dost sigh to watch the glow of reddening sky while sleep the wordlings wrapped in grey of mist and dreams that round them play in semblance of reality thought's craggy cliff is steep to try that walls the future yet hope's eye doth catch the breaking beacon ray beyond the verge now gleam and glance in gold array bright veins on towers that meet half way like spears and torches held on high and flashing as the wind sweeps by the herald's fleet of that new day beyond the verge End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rondeau, the Old and New by Walter Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in February 2017. The Old and New together meet around the world, across the street, as neighbors side by side that grew, as friends or foes as false or true whose tale the heedless hours repeat two stems entwined to part and greet from one root springing bittersweet with flower and fruitage seed to strew the old and new since serpents twined their knowledge knew the heart of man between the two with clinging hands and winged feet he stands the sport of time's deceit the party-colored shield in view, the old and new. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rondeau Across the Fields by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Across the fields like swallows fly Sweet thoughts and sad of days gone by from life's broad highway turned away like children thought and memory play nor heed time's scythe though grass be high beneath the blue and shoreless sky time is but told when seedlings dry by love's light breath are blown like spray across the fields now comes the scent of fallen hay the flowers bestrew the foot-worn clay while summer breathes a passing sigh as westward rolls the day's gold eye, And time with labor ends his day Across the fields. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rondeau in Love's Disport By Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org By Larry Wilson in love's disport gay bubbles blown on summer's winds light freighted flown a child intent upon delight and painted spheres would keep in sight dissolved too soon in worlds unknown lo from the furnace mouth hath grown fair shapes as frail with jewelled zone clear globes which fate might read aright in love's disport o frail as fair though in the white of flameful heat with force to fight art thou by careless hands cast down or killed where frozen hearts disown the children born of love and light in love's disport end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Rondo, What Makes the World by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in February 2017. What makes the world for you and I? A space of lawn, a strip of sky. The bread and wine of fellowship. The cup of life for love to sip. A glass of dreams in hope's blue eye. So let the days and hours still fly. Let fortune flout and fame deny with feathered hill shall fancy trip. What makes the world? The wealth that never in the grip of blighting greed shall heedless slip, when bought and sold is liberty. With worth of life and love gone by, what makes the world? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rondo, Seed Time by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium in February 2017. The field is wide, broadcast the seed of human hope and human need, as to and fro, from end to end, the furrows of the world ye wend its legion hungry mouths to feed. Though lowering o'er the landscape bend, the brows of winter, rains descend, and tempest sowings whirlwinds breed, the field is wide. Sowing, ye shall reap indeed golden grain, or grisly weed, or dragon's teeth, that in the end, perchance, in golden ears depend, sunward, as our path doth lead, the field is wide. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rondeau, A Seat for Three by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa, in Belgium, in February 2017. A seat for three, where host and guest may side by side pass toast or jest, and be their number two or three, with elbow room and liberty, what need to wander east or west? A book for thought, a nook for rest, and meet for fasting or for fest, in fair and equal parts to be, a seat for three. Then give you pleasant company, for youth or elder shady tree, a roof for counsel or sequest, a corner in a homely nest, free, equal, and fraternally, a seat for three. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rondel, When Time Upon the Wing by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org by Iswa in Belgium, in February 2017. When time upon the wing a swallow heedless flies, love birds forget to sing beneath the loosened skies. For now belated spring with her last blossom highs, when time upon the wing a swallow heedless flies. What summer hope shall bring to wistful dreaming eyes? What fateful forecast fling before life's last surprise when time upon the wing a swallow heedless flies? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Book of Hours by Walter Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by April 6090, California, United States of America. This Book of Hours. This Book of Hours love wrought with burnished letters gold, each page with art and thought and colors manifold his calendar he taught to youths and virgins cold this book of ours love wrought with letters burnished gold love's priceless book is bought with sighs and tears untold of votaries who sought his countenance of old this book of ours love wrought with letters burnished gold end of poem this recording is in the public domain triolet by Walter Crane, read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. In the light, in the shade, this is time and life's measure. With a heart unafraid, in the light, in the shade, hope is born and not made. 
and the heart finds its treasure in the light in the shade this is time and life's measure end of poem this recording is in the public domain at shelley's grave by walter crane read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk written in the protestant cemetery rome april eleventh eighteen seventy two tread softly here the heart of shelley lies his grave a garden neath the cypress wood stirred with the tongues his spirit understood and spake in deathless song that vivifies men's souls made heavy with the sad world's cries still where the darkness hides the dragon brood of evil and while yet innocent blood is shed and truth and falsehood change their dyes thy voice is heard above the silent tomb and shall be heard until the end of days while freedom lives and whatsoever things are good and lovely still thy spirit sings and by thy grave to-day fresh violets bloom but on thy head imperishable bays End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Voice of Spring by Walter Crane. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. I heard the voice of spring. I saw her look out of the naked wood, and on the green traced the frail pattern of her steps unseen toward winter's house which he this day forsook there she hath turned the leaves of time's sad book seeking the songs well nigh forgotten clean by faltering birds in winter's dark domain or borne by bitter winds that none may brook art thou so near and we still all unmeet to give thee welcome due with service clear from dull world slavery and sordid taint the soil and rust of cities spirits faint o oh, fill us with new life and give us cheer whom life's best gifts art love and freedom greet end of poem this recording is in the public domain. A Day in Early Spring by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Thou art the bride of light, most glorious morn, Issuing to meet thy Lord, thy crystal gate, flung wide by flame-winged hours where he doth wait till from thy face the ethereal veil be torn clothed in white splendour and thy train upborne by silken-handed airs in fluttering state with piping minstrels joyful in thy fate and still before thee heard spring's herald horn thy silver feet have touched the sparkling grass where flowers are stars of light from heaven's blue dome dropped in the noiseless night to pave thy floor so like a splendid vision thou dost pass between the pillars of the sun's bright home drawn in time's pageant to return no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain
A Night in May by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. From Eve's lit casement turns reluctant day A lingering lover dreaming of delights Unseen, unknown, with summer scents and sights Scarce whispered through the modest green of May who yet beneath the dusk would kiss and play with mingled softness of mysterious lights with hidden sweets the silent hour requites ere from the west he sinks to night away but on the still gray eve what glory breaks a glowing sphere between the trembling trees as though the wandering world returning sees a silvern sun a softer day that makes ere this departs and his last song doth cease with his last breath that night's enchantment takes end of poem this recording is in the public domain Illusions by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. I stooped to drink of life's enchanted stream From fair green meads and flowery marge of youth A thirst for love, for fame, and sight of truth And dreaming as I drank, all life did seem fair as the pageant of a lover's dream that hides the grim and sordid world uncouth till time and change came by that know not ruth and grief was left to watch hope's flickering beam so from the bitter world i turned again to work to sleep but as in sleep i lay truth touched me and hope said to me arise whom waking i beheld as visions vain as dream beguiled one looks with clouded eyes upon the breaking morn nor knows it is the day end of poem this recording is in the public domain. On the Suppression of Free Speech at Chicago by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org With stifled voice who crieth from the west, Where sinks the ensanguined sun of freedom, Erst that spread her stainless wings, And sheltering nursed, from out all lands the hunted and oppressed. America, shrink not from thy new guest, For liberty was thine, for best and worst. How should her seed upon thy land be cursed, Till her false friends as traitors stand confessed? Doth freedom dwell, where ruthless kings of gain, Like stealthy vampires, still on labor feed? Still free, to toil or starve on plenty's plain? Then what of labor's hope? the will to be equal, fraternal, knowing want nor greed, shrined in a people's heart when states are free. June 1886 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Freedom in America by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org where is thy home, O freedom? Have they set thine image up upon a rock To greet all comers, shaking from their wandering feet The dust of old-world bondage, To forget the tyrannies of fraud and force, Nor fret, where men are equal, Slavish chain unmeet, Nor bitter bread of discontent to eat, Here where all races of the earth are met? America, beneath thy banded flag of old, It was thy boast that men were free to think, to speak, to meet, to come and go. 
What meaneth, then, the gibbet and the gag held up to labor's sons who would not see fair freedom but a mask, a hollow show? October 7th, 1887 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Prisoners of Liberty by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org John Burns and R. B. Cunningham Graham, who suffered for a brave attempt to maintain the right of free speech and public meeting in Trafalgar Square. What robe of honor doth the prison hide? What glory lines its stony cell and bare, that erst its tenants forth in triumph fare? Bondsmen for freedom! and the right denied by fraud and force in legal mask that bide, alike on Irish ground or London square, with violent hands on those, henceforth to bear the crest of battle on the people's side. What, must ye learn the lesson still so late that they who suffer for the common good stone walls confine not, and no chain doth hold? Blind tyranny, whom these, like men, withstood, whose tenfold force flings back the iron gate, whose names upon the reddening morn are scrolled. February 22nd, 1888 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Reminiscent Read for LibriVox.org by Amy Graymore Through seas of light above the opal blue, across the adriatic sped our ship her long wake trailing towards the ocean's lip far from the isles of greece in our fond view a vision bright that all our thoughts imbue which from the book of days may never slip but in the golden haze of memory dip and its fresh youth continually renew it was my fortune late to tread upon the marble stairs of athens sacred steep to see its columned gate in moonlight sleep beneath the shadow of the parthenon fair still in ruin though well time might weep for palace fallen and her glory gone end of poem this recording is in the public domain of hellas dead read for librivox dot org by amy graymore mid wrecks of hellas dead in marble state whose relics whiten still aegean shore gold treasures of kings art's precious ore cast up by time's slow waves to us so late it reached me then these things to meditate how fell such pillared state how lost its lore what palsy touched the hand what ate the core of ancient life why hellas met such fate and so me thought of nations now that sail upon the wings of commerce and of gold with new-found force electric iron and steam to yoke fierce nature's neck shall these avail to save us or our toil-wrung wealth redeem if freedom fair and justice lose their hold end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Hammersmith Choir by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Sweet voices broke my sleep on Christmas morn, Clear through the moonlit air their anthem rung, Of human hope and fellowship that sung, A mass for souls not dead but yet new-born, A herald blast on freedom's silver horn, At day-spring on the brooding darkness flung, With tidings of new joy, in tuneful tongue the marching song of workers travel-worn as one in dreams i heard and wondering rose e'en as the shepherds marvelling of old to hear the angels choiring and my blood quickened to catch at last their stirring close and so my heart took hope and courage good in thought of days to be in time untold christmas eighteen eighty eight end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Renaissance by Walter Crane Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Art once an outcast in a wintry land, 
far from the sun-built house where she was born did wander desolate and laughed to scorn by eyeless men who counted gold like sand nor any soul her speech would understand a friendless stranger in the city lorn toil grimed and blackened with the smoke upworn of human sacrifice of brain and hand then art aweary laid her down and slept beneath an ancient gate and dreaming smiled for hope like spring came full of tidings good and labor huge and free and brotherhood led her between them like a little child in time new-born to glad new life that leapt end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of renaissance a book of verse by walter crane